emphasis in awareness and awareness and use of outpatient smoking cessation service in Taiwan. So first I will, uh, starting from kind of uh, introducing the motivation of the study and, uh, and also give you a brief introduction of the outpatient smoking cessation service in Taiwan and also review some related literatures. First of all, smoking is the main mechanism of educational disparities in health. So people who with lower education are more likely to smoke, which leads them to have worse health and higher mortality. So for any tobacco uh, control intervention or cessation service, any more reduced smoking prevalence, they should consider the social inequality in smoking. So if a, uh, smokers with low education are less likely to use certain kind of service, um, those services will have limited effect on reducing the problem of smoking or even increase the educational disparities in smoking. Um, intuitively, people with more education are supposed to be more aware of the service and even use of kind of any kind of cessation service um, because they have the people uh, with more education. They are have, they are at a better social position with more knowledge um, and and more beneficial ties. So they kind of allow them to adopt and to know the new knowledge or new technology to avoid or even adjust risk factors. And there's little literature on um, uh, awareness of uh, smoking cessation service. Uh, one related study is John et al. They found that higher education is associated with higher awareness of any uh, cessation service in Taiwan during 2010 and 2011. Um, however, the literature on education and use of uh, smoking cessation service is kind of mixed. Some studies find no association between education and use of uh, cessation service. Some studies find positive association. Some find negative association. And now I'm going to give you a brief introduction of the outpatient smoking cessation service in Taiwan. So this service uh, was launched in 2002. So each uh, patient they need to pay a uh, visitation fee or visitation co-payment, and also co-payment for medication. Over the course of many years, the government tried to make the service more uh, accessible and affordable for everyone. So in 2012, uh, the government implemented um, a new payment scheme called Second Generation uh, Payment Scheme. So what the new payment scheme, uh, the biggest change under the new payment scheme is that um, the maximum medical co-payment or the maximum a fee is capped at 200 uh, Taiwan dollars, which is about six to seven US dollars. And the medicine fee is given away for low income residents and also Aboriginal and mountain areas and residents at outlying islands. So basically, under the new payment scheme, the service became more affordable for those disadvantaged smokers. And in terms of literature uh, related to awareness and use of the uh, outpatient smoking. Uh, Cessation service in Taiwan. China IO is the only study that has some findings on this. So they found that more education is uh, is related to higher awareness of the service, any assisted smoking cessation service, and but they don't find any association between education and use of assisted uh, cessation methods. However, their study did not cover the period after the new payment scheme was implemented, and also they did not separate the outpatient service from other assisted Cessation service such as quit lines or campaign uh, or classes. So overall, I propose two research questions. The first one is uh, research question one is: Is there any educational differences in awareness of, of the outpatient smoking cessation service in Taiwan? And the second one is: Is there any educational differences in the use of the outpatient service? And uh, uh, this study is uh, important because it has a strong public, uh, strong implication on whether the service would affect the existing educational disparities in smoking, which in turn will affect edu uh, educational disparities in health in general. And also it can add on to the limited uh, literature of this issue. Uh, the data I'm using as called Taiwan Adult Smoking Behavior Survey is a cross-sectional telephone interview survey. And I choose a pair from 2012 to 2014 because the new payment scheme was implemented in 2012. So I choose a pair from 2012 and forward. My study population is current smoker uh, who age uh, 25 to 64. 
And for the EU civil service, I stu the study population is current smoker who attempted to quit in the last 12 months because this, uh, the information about user service is only available uh, for among those who have attempted to quit. My two dependent variables, one is awareness of the outpatient service, and another one is the use of the outpatient service. So for the awareness variable, uh, respondent will ask, uh, are you aware of any system of service that health organization provide? If the respondent answered or mentioned that, oh yes, I'm aware of the outpatient service, that person will be called as one, otherwise zero. And then for the use variable, so the respondent were asked during the past 12 months, what kind of cooking method did you use? If the respondent mentioned that he has, he or she has used outpatient service, he or, uh, the respondent will be called as one, otherwise zero. And as for my independent variable, education is a key variable. Uh, it's a categorical variable including three categories, one uh, uh, including middle school or less, high school and college or more. And I also include other two variables for social economic status. One is employment status and another one is household income. Uh, because of time limitation, I, I won't go through the rest of the variables. Um, because my outcome variables, uh, both of my outcome variables are dichotomous, I use logistic regression. So each variable, I have three set, uh, three models. So model one, I'll, I only control for education and demographic variables. Model two, I add, I add uh, employment data and household income to model one to see if there's any educational differences in the outcome. Can that be explained by employment status or household income? And model three is the full model. This table shows you that the descriptive statistic for all current smokers. Uh, as you can see, on average, 26% of all current smokers uh, were aware of the outpatient service. And also the proportion of people who were aware of the service increased with education level. And this thing was using the descriptive statistic for current smokers who attempted to quit. Uh, among those who attempted to quit, 31% of them were aware of the service but only 11% of them have ever used the service. And once again, the proportion of people who were aware of the service or even use the service increased with their uh, increased by education level. This table shows you the weighted odds ratio from the registry pressure for it, uh, awareness of the service. As you can see from the uh, top part, there, there's a uh, very significant association between education and awareness of service. So compared to those people uh, with the highest level of education, me, uh, people with middle school or less or high school are uh, much, much more less likely to be aware of the service. And I also want to point out there's an a interesting variable on the bottom called visitation to a health care provider. So those who have visited health care providers in the past 12 months are more likely to be aware of the service. And then also, when I include this variable in model six, uh, the odds ratio for high school became uh, insignificant. So this variable, the, the visitation to healthcare providers, may have something to do with the educational differences in, in awareness of the service. Um, this table shows you the way the odds ratio from the description uh, for the use of the service. As you can see, there is no association between education and use of service at all, like from model one to model three. There's no significant associations. Okay. In, the end, uh, um, in the end, so just uh, let me summarize the results. So respond to uh, research question one, is there any educational differences in the awareness of the outpatient service? Yes, we found that people with more education are more likely to be aware of the, uh, the outpatient service. And also visitation to healthcare provider can explain some of the educational differences. And But even in the full model, education and awareness associated cannot be fully explained. And this result is similar to uh, one of the previous studies. And research question two, is there any educational differences in use of service? Uh, the answer is no, there's no significant association between education levels and use of service. 
this finally adds uh, to the unclear picture of the association between excuse me, education and use of service in the literature. And finally, so basically we found out there's the uneven distribution of information but equal access or use of the service. Uh, how do, what do we make out of this? So uh, is that because people just don't use the, don't use the service? Or the setting in Taiwan provide an equal access of service to everyone? Um, even in, as you can, uh, in the result there's about 20 to 30 percent of people who were aware of this service. So we think that governments should increase awareness of the service so that people can like use it more. And also, previous studies suggest that only se uh, the majority of smokers quit smoking unassisted. They don't use any kind of system method like, like uh, the outpatient service. So I th we think the, the first step is like government need to increase awareness of this thing so people can know this is good and then they will use it. And I want to jump back to the last part. So even if there's equal access to equal access or equal use of service, what about the outcome? Does everyone use the service and are like uh, su successfully quit smoking? And there's fewest, uh, there's studies suggest that um, um, people from with low social mental status are less likely to successfully quit, even if they use the service. Um, researchers have found that maybe they don't follow up, finish the treatment. So this is something that need, need to be considered in the future. Um, limitation, very soon. <laughs> limitation, um, because I mentioned that our data is from a telephone interview uh, survey, so and that uh, kind of, so the telephone interview only reached people by landline, so that cannot capture, capture or represent people use uh, only cell phones. And also because, um, uh, the the telephone interview is kind of self report, so there may be some recall bias. And in the end, uh, this is, to our knowledge, the first study to specifically investigate the education, educational inequality in awareness and use of the national outpatient smoking signal program in an agency. Um, the study provides strong policy implications for public health policymakers and adds to existing literature on social inequality in awareness and use of smoking signals. Thank you very much. Again, we have to skip the question and answer. We don't have enough time. Uh, may I present the certificate of presentation?